Hi, this is Matthew with RetroEdge.Tech, and uh, I've been interested in a whole lot of command line bash shell scripting things. And if you take a look at some of my recent posts that I've published, uh, I've talked about the progress that I've made with being able to set up the BSPWM uh, window manager. So the binary space partitioning window manager is uh, what it's called. And so, and I've got I've got that here. I've got uh, my tiling window manager um, set up, and I'm really happy with how that turned out. And uh, I made some videos about that in my progress. And I'm writing a script in Bash or POSIX shell um, to be able to install that and automatically set that up. And so, with that, I'm learning some cool things. I'm learning how to write uh, functions in shell script. And I'm learning how to write if then statements. Uh, so I can say, if this file exists on the system, then do this or run this function. And I'm having a lot of fun with that. Uh, and so uh, as you can see from my posts, uh, this post is about um, my progress with BSPWM and my writing that script. Also um, just a recommendation of a place where I've been able to learn quite a bit about shell scripting, getting into the basics, and then pushing a little bit farther than that. Um, films by Chris and his shell scripting tutorials have been excellent. I highly recommend checking them out, and I wrote about that in this post. And then before that, uh, you know, writing about um, some Vim uh, shortcuts and cheat key, uh, um, cheat sheets is what uh, this says, the Vim cheat sheet. Um, and just my learning how to use a command line text editor better and i'm surprised at how quickly i've picked it up like i said i've known the basics the very basics of how to you know get into uh, the insert mode make some changes get out of the insert mode and then uh, exit and save i've known how to do that with vi and vim for a long time but I've been able to quickly pick up a lot of other things, you know, getting all the way to the end of the file, opening a new line under my cursor in the insert mode, deleting a word, changing a word. I've been able to pick those up really quickly and I'm enjoying the process. So um, I've been doing a lot of stuff with the command line and then also with some writing my own scripts. I just wanna show you how to get to uh, essentially, if you see a script that you like somewhere, how to download it and put it in your local bin directory um, so that you can run that right away, uh, right from the path. And I've done a previous video um, about that, about how to set up the path. Um, so that the path in Linux or Unix is where the computer looks to run programs or executables. And so if I just type echo dollar sign path it will show me and in a previous video i did show up or i did show how to set up so that um you have this dot local bin in your home folder but that's added to the path so any scripts or programs that you add to that particular subdirectory um that then it will run them in the path um so let's go there cd local bin and uh what do i have in there um i have um i have a script that um sends my hugo files so i write my website over here um and i write it in markdown and then i use a static site generator called hugo um, to generate this website in flat files um, and then i have a script I'll push to Retro Edge that sends that to my web server. So that's pretty cool. That's the only executable that I have in there. Let's go through how we would add another script um, and getting a script from somewhere else and put it in on your computer, but not for system wide, not to install it system wide, but to just install it for your user and your use locally in your folder so in your home folder in the dot local slash bin um so just taking the in is an example um here is a neo fetch um and that program outputs um 
a bunch of information about my system. It's kind of just to display, to show off. I say, hey, I'm making a video or I'm taking a screenshot. Here's my system. Here's what I'm running right now. And it tells you what operating system, uh, what kind of machine I'm on, what version of the kernel, what version of bash I'm using, my monitors, um, what window manager I'm using. So BSPWM, what terminal I'm using, etc. cetera. Um, how much memory I have, how much memory I'm using. And if I say which Neo fetch, it will tell me where that's located. And I've installed this on my system so that it's installed for everybody, all the users on my system. But if I'm not logged in as Matthew, but logged in as another user, I still run Neo fetch. But if there's programs that I, or scripts that I just want for me and not to be system wide, and that's where the dot local slash bin comes in. Um, so I'm going to press Control L to clear um, the screen there. Um, so that um, back at the top, and uh, let's install a script. So NeoFetch is a great example. Um, so again, you know NeoFetch. I can press Tab to auto complete it. Press Enter. Here it comes down. So let's search for that. This is actually written in Bash. Um, and I'm not going to install this because I've already got that on my system. Let's get something else. But I'll, I'll search for GitHub because that's where I know where this is at. And then I'll put NeoFetch. And uh, so here's the repository for NeoFetch. And here's the author, uh, Dylan. Um, and then if we wanted to look at the NeoFetch file, we could do that. And then here is the bash file. Um, that is the program of NeoFetch. And we can see how big it is. It's 313 kilobytes, um, about uh, 10,000 uh, lines there. Uh, and what's really cool about Dylan's scripts is that he comments them just all over so you can really understand uh, what's going on in these scripts so everything is very detailed comment and we'll we'll show you exactly you know what what the code is supposed to do so you can actually read this and get a lot out of how to use or how to write your own scripts it's a little bit on the advanced side because dylan's a pretty Pretty good coder. I'm, I've been very impressed um, with this stuff. Um, but you know, here's where it is. And if I wanted to see just the raw file of that, I can click on raw here, and it will load just the file straight into there. So it's just that file in its raw format, just the text. It's not formatted inside the GitHub page if I, if I click on raw. Well, I've already got NeoFetch installed. Um, so let's go grab some other code. Um, so let's go here. And back to that, and then I will click on, um, I'll go up a little bit higher here. I'll click on Dylan's name. And instead of NeoFetch, there's another um, system information kind of reporting tool that he wrote called pfetch. And I think that is named for POSIX shell. Um, so he didn't write this in Bash. He wrote this in essentially just the, the more minimal POSIX shell um, which um, is essentially bash is that, plus it adds a whole bunch of extra stuff on that are often called bashisms that are peculiar to the bash shell, but not just compliant with all shells, like the POSIX compliant shells stuff is supposed to be. So I think pfetch is supposed to be that. And if we click on the pfetch, you know, so here's a description of a little bit of what it's about. Um, and if you read the code, it's Pretty cool. Again, it's commented very well um, so that you can get what's going on. If we look here, this is much smaller. The um, This is about 44 kilobytes, uh, where um, the NeoFetch script was about uh, 300 and some kilobytes. Um, so it might be just the difference in commenting and that sort of thing, but this is much slimmer and it doesn't do quite as much, but it does something very similar. Let's, because this is just a shell script, let's use pfetch as an example to be able to run in your um, dot .local dot .bin. You've got that set up as a place in your path. Then let's grab this from GitHub, put it there. 
um, on your system, or I'll do it and show you, and then that's it will be an example of being able to add things, add scripts, um, some of which you've written, and then some of which you can source from elsewhere. We'll get this one from GitHub. So I'll click on raw here, and then this will be just the text file of that script, that's it. Um, and you can see that up here, the shebang line is um, just bin sh instead of um, uh, the bash. Um, so it's specifically calling whatever's the default shell, um, which on Ubuntu in Linux Mint will be dash, which is actually a POSIX compliant shell. Um, on this system, um, the default uh, of thing that this gets symlink to is bash. So if this will be run as a bash script. Um, and I can see that by doing ls dash l and then bin slash sh. And it will show me that this bin um, sh is symlinked to bash. If I were to run that same command um, on Ubuntu or Linux Mint, it would actually say that it's symlinked to a program called dash which is very much like Bash, um, but is POSIX compliant. Well, a little bit of extra information. Let's get this. So there's a whole bunch of stuff here. So instead of copying and paste it, let's use a basic um, Linux utility that is in included in pretty much all uh, Linux distributions, and that is wget. And wget just simply retrieves things from the web. So we're gonna type uh, in, we're gonna copy here, Press Control Shift V and then copy in that exact location. So here we've got um, wget, the URL, the address of that raw script from GitHub. Press Enter and it's just going to grab it and pull it there. I'll press Control L again to get it clear up the terminal. Um, and now when I list the files in this directory with ls, we can see that it shows us pfetch and then my existing script push to retro edge that I already had there. wget dot pfetch from GitHub, put it in my local um, that, uh, slash bin directory. Now, if I was in my downloads folder, my home folder, and I ran wget in this, it would put it in there. I changed the directory so that I was already in local slash bin um, so that I could have the script in the exact location where I wanted. Now, if I were to try to run this, if I just pfetch, it's just going to say permission denied. It, it won't run it. I need to change it so that it's executable. And I can do that with chmod space plus x space. And then I can start typing the name of the file and press tab to auto complete. And now that will add executable or make pfetch an executable. If I run it, there's no error list files again, and it's going to show it in the different color here, which indicates that it is executable. And if I were to show more options, like something like that, we can see that the X is in each of these, which says that it's executable um, uh, by, by my user and then also by other users on the system. Made it executable for everybody here. They have access to. So now, um, now, if, if this wasn't in our path, remember echo dollar sign path, the folder that we're in is in um, my path where it's looking for uh, executables. Um, if, it, if this file wasn't in my path, I would have to press, you know, dot slash and then B fetch and then it would run. But because in it, you know, there we go. It's going to do that. It's going to. It's going to, the script works. It works. Um, let's. But let's go out. Let's go back. Let's just go to my home folder, and that's not where I have that script installed at all. But because pfetch is again in my path, I put it in um, this directory right there. Now when I type pfetch anywhere it will run that script. So that's an example of being able to take um, scripts that you find elsewhere and then put them directly into your user bin directory, um, I guess local to your home folder, and then be able to run them.
Um, now, when I start a new, so I'll just close that one. Um, and then if I uh, open up a new terminal window, um, I, it, it loads uh, NeoFetch again as the default. And that's because I've in the .bash RC file, I've edited it so that um, NeoFetch is what runs when I start that um, file. So I've, I've got a few other modifications in there, but let's change that so that when I open a, a terminal now, um, that instead of running NeoFetch, it'll run pfetch. So um, I will do vim.bashrc, and we're in our home folder. If I wasn't in my home folder, I could go use the tilde slash as a shortcut and then uh, type, type bash rc. Um, I, and then I'm near the end here, but I could just define NeoFetch. I type the slash and then start typing that and then press enter. And it's gonna, then Vim's gonna take my cursor directly to that. Um, and I wanna change this so that it's not NeoFetch anymore, but it will be pfetch. And I can use the Vim shortcut CW to change the word CW. It then deletes that word, but then also puts me into insert mode, as you can see down here. Um, and, and then my cursor's there, and then I can just start typing. So I can type e fetch, and now I can press escape to get out of insert mode. Shift colon WQ, and I've written the file, and then I've quit Vim. Let me close. Um, this terminal window, and if I've done it correctly, then pfetch should run when I open it again. So I'll open a terminal window, and you can see that pfetch is now um, running when I start a terminal instead of neofetch. It's a little bit faster. Do we really want to say that one is better than the other? Uh, they're both written by the same author. So it's not like there's two different authors and one guy says, oh, this one's terrible. Let me rewrite it, you know, and do something different and faster. It's the same author. And I think he wrote it to prove a point um, that he wrote one in bash shell scripting with some of the bashisms and the extra stuff and lots of pretty formatting. And then he wrote the other one in POSIX um, compliant shell scripts and called it pfetch. One's NeoFetch, one's pfetch, and it, it is slimmer and faster, pfetch is. But the same author wrote both scripts and both programs. Just in summary, that's how you can grab a script from elsewhere, put it directly on your computer, have it in your path, and that way you can find it wherever you are and just run that um, in your system. So just as an example, let's say I would change my um, a directory to documents. And so I'm not in my path, I'm not in my home, but then I can still type P, F, and then uh, will it autocomplete? Yes, if I go far enough, P, F, E, and then press tab to autocomplete. It does autocomplete because it's, it's going, autocomplete is looking through places in my path, and now it has found it, I can run it. Thanks so much for watching. Bye for now.